Everything's marvelous. You're quite the killing machine, aren't you? But it's true that you did learn from a real master. Why, thank you. You? But all that could be achieved by practice. And there's something else about you that attracts What? You want my body? Something that will open up a whole new future for humanity. Something much bigger than you've ever dreamed. Oh! Last week we took a look at a good Konami mid PlayStation 2 game, so I thought I'd follow that up this week with another mid PlayStation 2 game by Konami, this one being Psy Girls. This game is based off a popular series of 12-inch action figures, who are all very articulate and very customizable. But who are the Psy Girls? Well, they're basically an organization of specially trained individuals who are secretly fighting criminals and big evil cyberpunk type corporations, kind of like G.I. Joe, except they're all hot babes. Babe is sexual harassment. Next time you call me that, I'll fill you for this. Oh, excuse me, uh, professional ladies. The game comes on two discs, with each disc revolving around a character from the franchise. You got Asuka, who is a ninja on a personal revenge mission, and then you got Ice, who is some kind of super hacker. There's also some slight variations in the gameplay, with Asuka being a ninja and of course using stuff like a sword and grappling hooks and throwing stars, while Ice uses guns and grenades. Now what makes these two girls special are their ability to jack into cyberspace. And in the in-world law, you usually have to create an avatar, but these two are able to directly put themselves into cyberspace, circumventing all the rules and regulations that corporations and governments have established. Surface level, the game seems kind of like an action game. But as you play, you'll find that it's a far cry from the likes of Devil May Cry and Uncharted. In fact, all the action elements are rather half-baked. For Asuka, you got this massive guard gauge at the bottom of the screen, but in order to guard, you have to hold down the attack button and then wait for like a second or second and a half for her to start actually guarding. Sure, it'll keep you impervious to bullets and melee attacks, but honestly, it's a, it's a bad way to implement it. It takes too long to activate. There's also a rather stiff cover system that you primarily use while playing as Ice, who of course has all the guns, but for the most part you're running around in your typical PlayStation 2 hallways, which are all completely barren and actually kind of devoid of cover. They both do have a dodge button though, which can be used to jump over enemies as Asuka, or Max paint yourself onto the floor if you're playing as Ice. I don't know, it just kind of felt like it was a waste of time trying to be fancy with the dodging system while I was playing. Going into cyberspace is a little bit different. Well, first of all, it looks like the Matrix has vomited all over the place. No can blame them, it's a 2004 game after all. And secondly, since you can't bring weapons in there, you will be using light and heavy attacks instead. But just as half-baked as the rest of the action is, there's really no way to chain together attacks, or combo strings, or anything like that. One aspect that does feel kinda cool in cyberspace is that you download new abilities to use in there. And these abilities are all executed by holding down the R button, putting in a string of button presses, and then letting go of the R button to execute the command. And this can be stuff such as slowing down time around you, or breaking barriers, or something as simple as jumping higher. I don't know, there was just something about the way it worked that kind of felt like you were kind of hacking or interfacing with the computer, typing in protocols and commands and... I don't know, just cool hacker stuff. But playing the game only for a short while, you'll quickly discover that it's a lot less about the action and more about the puzzles. Progression is about running around in the level and figuring what switch to push or where to use an item. And you really gotta be knocking those two brain cells together, because this isn't like a modern game, it isn't like Uncharted 3 where you only get two seconds when you walk into a room before they straight up tell you what you have to do to proceed. 
and sometimes even unfairly so. For instance, here I'm playing as Asuka, and I have to find 16 Roombas hidden around the level and get all their data chips. And you find a remote to summon the Roombas, or at least the ones you're only able to supposed to hear. But after running around the level a couple of times, fighting constantly respawning enemies, I kinda figure out that the Roombas don't always make a sound. So you just kinda gotta run around everywhere and mash on the remote button until they appear. Kind of annoying, but where the game got really frustrating was on this second level as Ice. Ok, let me set it up here. She's gotten captured and put in this all-female prison that she got to escape from. But in order to do that, she has to free all the other prisoners in order to start a riot. And of course, this prison can't just be straightforward pathways. No, you have these rotating rooms where you gotta shoot the switches inside in order to line everything up. So you can log into the mainframe, go into cyberspace, and go to the three holding facilities in order to unlock all the prisoners. You are basically playing Pipe Mania in 3D, and I hate Pipe Mania. I mean, ever since I was a kid playing Pipe Mania on my dad's PC, it was just the most boring game imaginable. And they can't stop putting it in every game. I was playing the Resident Evil 2 remake earlier this year, and even there you have to hack some electrical grid by pipe maniang switches around. It's so tedious. So yeah, this level took me like an hour and a half of just running around and trying to figure out what's up and down in these completely identical hallways. And it honestly felt like I'd been playing for like 12 hours or something. It was just so, so boring. In the end, it did culminate in a pretty cool boss fight with the warden. Well, cool in the sense that something different was finally happening. It seems like they designed it in a way where they wanted you to stay in cover and shoot at her as she was sticking her head out and there was a big monitor in the background with a camera where it kind of followed where she was. But in the end it was kind of easier to just run up and chuck grenades at her. So yeah, that's Psy Girls, or more like Psy Girls, am I right? You need a lot of thinking work to play this one. And on this channel we don't play games to think. Thank you very much. So yeah, it's a pass for me, but honestly and objectively speaking, for 2004 it's uh, sort of average and it seems like it was expensive to make. Even the cutscenes are painfully average, the voice acting isn't quite there to be really ridiculous, but there are some pretty hammy and choice voice lines. Kogetsu, I'll save you! No! Get out of here! Stay alive! And wait for your chance. I haven't got time for all this talk. Throw down your weapon and come here, and I'll let him go. As always, thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, and a big thank you to all my Patreons who are supporting me with just a dollar a month, which you can too by clicking on the link below the video. Take care and see you next week.